The Mystery of Ash Hill A bright, living fire, as if sensing something, fluttered around the sacred altar. The old priest approached it with great respect and sorrow. Apologetically, the minister covered the flames with a thick cloth. The hearth, deprived of air, was soon extinguished, and only soot rose in the wake of the departing priest. Closing the doors tightly, the old man waved his hand to his assistants. They immediately began to seal the temple. The Legend of the Solar Cult Archaeologists stumbled upon an amazing structure by excavating ash and dust that was not merely centuries old, but over a thousand. Here's that moment of history captured in archival footage in 2011. Having carried out excavations here this summer for two months, we have revealed the earliest architectural complex of what we believe to be the Yassi Citadel. What we have found consists of a fortress with powerful walls two to three meters thick and a strange cross-shaped building. Even ten years later, this strange building has yet to reveal all its secrets. I don't believe we've reached the bottom yet. It's four meters high and perhaps even four and a half. And then there is this temple. Whom did the ancient residents of southern Kazakhstan worship? And what rituals were performed here? Why does the temple need fortress walls? And from whom did the priests defend themselves? Kazakhstan, Egypt, Great Britain, Italy. We're going to explore the cult of the sun throughout history and the historical records of one of the most mysterious kingdoms of Kazakhstan. What do ancient monuments have in common? There is no need to look for direct similarities here. What's important is the principle. In honor of what holiday was the temple erected? A holiday of forgiveness and reconciliation. And what were the Kultube residents hiding? It was probably mothballed at some time in the 8th or the 9th century. Stonehenge, and how the cult of sun worship spread around the globe, a mysterious kingdom, and why the Kultube temple was hidden. The Great Step, the mystery of Ash Hill, reflections on history, our version. Chapter 1. The Mysterious Kingdom of the Kang It was built from adobe bricks and dense clay. The building quickly rose to the level of the fortress walls. Its walls were probably as strong as those of the citadel. The chief priest personally monitored the work despite the summer heat. The complex structure was located in a carefully chosen place and each element had to be aligned with the construction plans. The legend of the solar cult. That priest is no more, but you can learn about the cult that he adhered to, the strange temple and the nation he called home. For archaeologists, this unassuming mass of earth is like a great tome. Opening it up, layer by layer, the pages are revealed. The earliest cultural layers of the settlement are buildings from the Kangju era, which is the 1st and 2nd century AD. Kangju is one of the most mysterious kingdoms in the history of both Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. For the most part, the secrecy is due to a lack of knowledge on the subject. Kangju was a state in the center of the Amun Darya and Sir Darya. It existed from 3 to 4 BC to the 4th century AD. It consisted of five large regions. The state was found in the part of the Amun Darya which flows into the Aral Sea. It was a sort of ancient union of powerful ethnic groups. To name just a few of them, Sakas, Sarmatians, Alans, and of course, the Kang. They cultivated the fields, were engaged in cattle breeding, controlled their section of the Silk Road, and maintained diplomatic relations with ancient Rome, Persia, and China. They were generally quite prosperous. 
The Kangju tribes who lived in the state were of different origins. They included Turkic, Iranian, East Iranian, Finno-Ugric, and those who, as we now believe, came from the southern Urals along the Sir Darya and along the Aral Sea. It was an amalgamation of tribes. In Zoroastrian literature, this conglomerate was called Kan Dem. It is called Kang in the Shahnameh, but in Chinese sources, Kangju is spoken of as an independent state. According to the Chinese chronicles, Tarban Kangui is believed to have been the state of the Kangju. This was the first reference to a state. In Chinese sources, it is referred to as the state. It was the first state on the territory of Kazakhstan. The center of this state was the land in mid Sirdarya. This has been proven. In the writings of Mahmud Kashkari, words like Kanli and Kanha are the names of the ruler. In the Indo-European language, the word Kangju is translated as water or river. In the Turkic language, Kan or Ken means space. And there is yet another version of events, possibly the most interesting. Allegedly, a certain Khan did not have enough cards to take away the spoils of war. Artisans were brought in. They undertook the work, but their vehicles were made with a certain secret within them. For example, according to Rashid ad-Din, the word kankalis means a cart. It's pronounced as kang kang. Perhaps this tribe of artisans began to be named in honor of this sound. Kankalis is exactly what the Kipchak language group is called today. These are the distant ancestors of the Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, Uzbeks, and to some extent the Bashkirs. Another hypothesis is related to the origin of the words kanga or kanka. Perhaps its root is taken from the Turkic word kon, which means blood, and more specifically, sacrificial blood. How does one become a priest of the Temple of the Sun? What do Kultobe and Stonehenge have in common? And whom do the Kang worship? Chapter 2 Solar Puzzles The omnipotent sun, the distributor of time, strolls at a leisurely pace in the center of the firmament. A sacred watchman, one of the strongest, is observing its progress. The watchman had earned this right in battle, yet he, a magnificent archer, was taken by surprise. Struck by several arrows, the warrior priest did not lower his gaze from the sacred luminary. He fell upon the blood-stained stones of the ancient temple, the legend of the solar cult. Much like the past itself, the sun can barely be seen through a curtain of rain. Only a few meters remain before we reach the place where the warrior breathed his last. Among the many British memorials, this ancient monument is the most famous. It was built, like most solar monuments, with great care, so that at certain moments it would align with the sun. During the winter and summer solstices, the rays converge in such a way that they find themselves in the intervals of these stones. This suggests that Stonehenge was built for a specific reason. It's still a mystery as to what that purpose was. Perhaps the stone circle was a kind of stage where festivities were held in honor of the ancestral spirits? Or was it an ancient astronomical laboratory? There is a theory that Stonehenge is the necropolis of the tribes that lived here. Another supposition is that it was a sanctuary dedicated to the sun. Most likely, Stonehenge began with burials. Several decades ago, the first series of burials were discovered that date back to the 3rd millennium BC. It is clear that such structures could have been built over a long period and changed over the course of time. 
And the most important question is, who built this mysterious structure? People had changed. Uh, people were moving elsewhere. So uh, 3,000 years ago, it all was just left. The knowledge is lost. Only the legends remain. And could the deceased archer really be a priest of Stonehenge? Some researchers are convinced that one needs to go to Italy to discover the origins of the legend. The temple of the goddess Diana, also known as Artemis, was located here, just 30 kilometers from Rome. In its sacred rites, the origins of the barbaric and Scythian prevail. So, for example, only a fugitive slave, having killed the former priest with their own hands, is chosen as her priest. Therefore, the priest is always girded with a sword, expecting an attack and ready to defend himself. The ancient historian and geographer, Strabo. In general, the hallmarks of solar worship are most numerous amongst the nomads. They are reflected in petroglyphs, ornaments, traditions, language, and the genetic code. The cult of the sun and the cult of fire have traversed Great Britain, Italy, Mexico, Egypt, indeed, the entire planet for millennia. Fire worship can be traced in the Rig Veda, in our rock carvings and in the funeral rites of the same tribes of the Andronovo culture and of later Scythian tribes. The worship of the cult of fire is both Indo-Iranian and a more ancient or primitive one. And when archaeologists discover a burial of the Saka period and say that an altar exists there and that a fire was likely burned there, assuming that it is connected to Zoroastrianism, the linguists usually respond by saying that this may or may not be so because the cult of fire has always existed, both before and after the Zoroastrian period. The Saka Masajatai worshipped a supreme deity with a pronounced solar tinge. The worship of the sun god is associated with the cult of fire in its most diverse manifestations. The Kang Jews, most likely, also adopted the beliefs of the Saka tribes. According to the researchers, there is a Zoroastrian temple here. This territory, being at a crossroads on the Silk Road, at one time turned into a crossroads of religions. Alignment with the sun and moon, as clearly observed at Stonehenge, Arkaim and many other monuments, can be traced through the centuries. There is no need to look for a direct similarity here. The principle is more important. Here and there, people tried to observe the movement of celestial bodies and luminaries. This was achieved in different ways. If huge stone structures were built in Stonehenge, then in Arkaim, for example, a mound of earth was enough. Such complexes are found in the south and the center of Kazakhstan. They are so-called barrows with moustaches, and they are considered to be open-air temples. Astronomers studied the movements of the stars and the sun, and then this complex was built according to their observations. Researchers say that most likely these barrows became an architectural model for the craftsmen in Kangju. The cross and the circle wheel are the main symbols of the solar cult. But Kultobe and similar structures are unique and are found precisely here in the Sir Darya. This form of building is quite common on different continents. And, naturally, from ancient times, it also had certain religious associations. However, some of their forms can be considered to be architecturally specific to the oasis territory of the Kangju state and the regions closest to it. From the monograph, Archaeology and History of the Kangju State.
It is the cruciform layout of the buildings that raises many questions among researchers. Could it be that this is some kind of prestigious dwelling with a family sanctuary? Or is Kultube a burial structure? It is clear that, apparently, some gatherings, ritual actions and a meeting of priests took place here. In the floor coverings, we found gold strips that are usually found on clothes. We've made all kinds of small discoveries that say that the people who were in this room wore expensive attire. For what purposes was this building raised? How has astrology influenced architecture? And how is this connected to Nauruz? Chapter 3 Temple of Nauruz At dawn, the priest king came out of the side entrance in sacred vestments. He gazed into the narrow opening on the east wall until the first ray of the March sun slid along the walls of the sanctuary to rest at its center. The sacrifice must be performed in a sacred place and at a sacred time. And only the senior minister could determine the appropriate point. The Legend of the Solar Cult After sleeping through thousands of sunrises, this building saw sunlight once again. There are no other adobe brick buildings older than this one in the whole of southern Kazakhstan, where you're able to stand and walk. The unique structure was covered with a dome to preserve it for our descendants. The edifice is located in the southern part of the citadel. When viewed from above, it looks like a cross with rounded ends. They were digging under the stylobate when they found a structure similar to a quarter foil with four corners. Put simply in modern language, it's called a cross. Its walls are over two meters thick. The dimensions of the building are 18 by 18 meters. The width of each side of the cross is 7 meters. The structure is fairly accurately oriented in the direction of the cardinal points. And this, according to experts, is not at all accidental. This is due to some kind of seasonal changes and may be connected with the solstice festivities or something else. According to one version of events, the temple is dedicated to the December solstice since the winter headquarters of the Kangju rulers was located here in Kultube. According to another hypothesis, this sanctuary was built in honor of the ancient festival of Nauris. In general, in ancient times, it was a festival of remembrance of ancestors and their spirits. People dressed cleanly and completely in white and commemorated their ancestors. A festival of forgiveness, reconciliation, a festival associated with the suspension of all conflicts, wars and clashes that were taking place amongst peoples or states. And it was the time of Nauruz, the arrival of an armistice, that everyone would look forward to. In springtime, Regulus flares up over the dome of the cross-shaped temple, the bright point of the constellation Leo, right in its heart. Incidentally, Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids are also aligned to this royal star. The lion devouring its prey is a very popular story in many countries. Ancient astronomers rethought this picture in their own way, and it became a symbol of the beginning of the harvest. Many of the temples were centers of astronomical observation, of the movement of planets and stars. The creation of calendar systems was one of the most important results of regular observations of celestial bodies. The calendar was associated with the cycle of agricultural work. Alexander Vinogradov, millennia buried by the desert. By and large, many scientists are certain that astrology in the architecture of the cross temples was of key importance. 
all such sanctuaries are oriented to the equinox, to the east. The other two were found in Uzbekistan. There are such buildings in the Jambil region too. There is a lot in common in terms of their form. But so far only here, in Turkestan, the amazing Kangju temple can almost be seen in its original form. It's a unique case for Central Asia. Layouts of this type of building are virtually unknown as anything found before this was heavily damaged. In this case, we have a site which is well preserved almost as far as the level of the second floor. Curiously, for some reason, the entrance to the building was on the second floor. Apparently, people entered the temple with the help of a ladder, and the walls for the ritual construction are overly massive. Why was this? What was so carefully guarded here? And does this monument represent something more than a cult? What does the word kultobe mean? What shrine did the priests guard? And why was the cross-shaped building hidden? Epilogue Mysterious Shrine Scientists are still arguing about what the word kultobe means. There are two main versions of what it might mean. According to one of them, it's called a hill of ash. According to the other, this is the holy peak. Before the excavations, a whole mound of detritus and ash was formed at this place. Perhaps that's the reason why it started to be so named several decades ago. It was used as a landfill during the Soviet era, and there was lots of ash there. Researchers believe that the hypothesis of a holy peak originates from the time of the erection of the mausoleums of Muslim saints in this region. It's as though four saints are spiritually guarding and supporting Turkestan on all four sides. Or perhaps the name has a more distant history. At the turn of the last millennium, Kultube was one of the most important fortification posts on one of the busiest branches of the Great Silk Road. It was an outpost which, of course, needed protection. According to all the data, it is clear that this was a powerful fortress. Naturally, it served to defend the central part of the Yassi settlement. There are quadrangular towers. Such were the towers in ancient cities and even in the ancient world. Some scientists believe that there might have been a special shrine here, since the defensive system of this temple is so powerful. This is consistent with the version of Kultobe being a sacred peak. Moreover, in the cult of fire, ash is an obligatory component. This is an iconic courtyard in which some ritual actions were performed. There are foci and altars where fire was burned for extensive periods of time. And yet, what could be so carefully guarded here? There are hundreds of discoveries, with any Kangju artifacts being archaeologically unique. And what did Kangjus find so valuable at Kultobe? No one knows. And there is one more secret that is as yet unresolved. Probably in the 8th or 9th century, the monument was protected by residents who lived here at that time. They encased it in such dense and raw clay that it has been so well preserved. The platform, that is 24 meters long and just as wide, completely covered the four-leafed building. Archaeologists say that there's no way of knowing what was built over it. However, we may yet discover what was hidden. The chief took one last look at the family sanctuary. The building hidden under the thickness of the clay remained only in his memory. Someday he will restore it once more, but the tribe had left the city, never to return. The Legend of the Solar Cult